Hey guys, Gaston here, how are you? Today's video, I wanna show you a couple of important things that you have to keep in mind when you want to work on your slice serve. And I have chosen this video from uh, Milos Raonic, which I think, you know, it's, it's maybe we can call, uh, between quotation mark, uh, a perfect slice serve. And why I chose this, I'm gonna tell you in a couple of steps. First of all, uh, you know, Milos is probably one of the cleanest uh, players on the tour in terms of technique. And I wanna show you first the serve and how it travels. And then we're gonna go through a couple of key points here to make it work that way. So if you see here, the opening of this ball, okay, after the hit, it's not only wide and opening, but you can see the height that the ball gets. Of course, it was an ace and how um, Djokovic can even reach it. You know, and we're talking about Djokovic, which is, probably one of the best returns on the tour, uh, but it was really, really good serve. So when I, you know, when we think about this light serve, we have to keep in mind, uh, first, of course, and maybe the, the most obvious, uh, hitting the ball from the side if we have a watch, okay, on the number three. But one of the things that called my attention uh, the most here, and it's probably if we analyze uh, a lot of serves from the pro players, we can see this. But if you check here, in this point, you can see that if I show you only this picture, you might think, well, uh, Milos is going to hit the ball with the frame of the racket. But what happens here is the perfect rotation, okay, the pronation that he makes with the hand. So actually what it's going to make your slicer better is not everything that happens from here, you know, the toss of the ball and everything, which is also great because we can see that the toss goes, you know, up in the air through maybe the one o'clock and then ends up closing to the left and falling into the, into the 12 o'clock, which is great because he's not calling out the serve. But you can see here, for me, up from this point and ahead is where the serve is going to be decided on, uh, decide on where to go. Because here, he could still choose to go with a kick serve if his pronation would be more to the side after this. He could still, from there, go in for a flat serve, but then he chose a slice. So when, you know, me as a coach, I, I talk to my players, you know, and I, and I teach and all level, you know, all levels, juniors, professionals or, or, you know, recreational. It's one great here, one thing great here that we have to keep in mind that the serve is not decided because, you know, players sometimes, uh, sometimes they spend so much time just working and worrying on what happened here. You know, put the legs together, drumming them together. We have a wider stance where we toss the ball. How do I drop the racket behind? But which actually is going to decide your serve is from this point and up, what you do with the pronation of the serve. And here is what I want to point out, you know, with, with Milo's uh, serve. Look at the pronation here, how from the frame of the racket going towards the ball, he makes a great pronation. Okay, when we talk about the pronation, is this movement here where now the strings are facing to the side of the court and now the strings are facing to the back and the front of the court, so to his back and to Djokovic in this case. So this is the pronation that is gonna decide where the ball goes. And, and you know, when I call it a perfect serve, it's actually because his pronation here, it's very quick, you know, if, if, if I leave the video, you know, if I make maybe like, like this in a faster motion, you can see how this slap on the ball is actually what first is gonna give a lot of a spin to open to the side because he's hitting from the side and making a quick pronation. It's going to give a lot of a speed. Okay, so a great part of the speed of the serve, you know, and the acceleration of the serve is going to come from this acceleration here, you know, this last slap on the ball. Of course, the legs have a lot to do, the height of the ball, the, the, you know, the, the weight of the body that he's throwing to the ball. But this is the last moment that is going to decide the final speed and the final uh, a spin, which is, in this case, and a slice, a flat, or a kick serve. So from here, you can see, and this is something that you know you can practice, actually. You can record your serve from behind. You can see how your racket is, is going to face the ball, how your racket is at this point. The elbow here, okay, pointing up, is actually uh, a very important matter also. And then you can start to recall and see, you know, in kind of like in checkpoints, how your serve goes, how you are between you know like like 30 centimeters maybe like like i don't know in inches 
uh, how close you get to the ball, how your racket is facing there, how your racket gets to the contact point, and then how your racket follows through and how you fall into the court, throwing all the weight. You know, you can see actually he's going forward from the baseline to the front of the baseline, throwing all the weight. He's a very, very heavy guy. You know, all the weight and all the serration into the ball. So the key thing here then to close up the idea for the slide serve is one, get on the number three of the ball, get it from the side. Two, a quick pronation, brushing the ball from the side. And three, throwing all the weight forward. And of course, the toss here helped a lot. You know, there is a lot of players that want to force the toss of the ball to the number two. But I think, you know, even though it's going to go great and you can get a, a great, you know, of course, the angle is going to be better. You're going to get a great serve from there. I think you're going to call the serve too much. So I would prefer to train the 12 toss and then a, a really quick brush here, really quick pronation with the hand to make the ball uh, go wide with a lot of acceleration. And then, of course, if you're a tall player, you're going to be able to make the ball jump almost to the, uh, you know, the height of the head of your opponent, in this case, Jokovic, which is uh, maybe like a 6-6-1 six, six, player. All right, so these are the details that I wanted to show you, you know, create some awareness in how these last moments of the serves are going to decide where your ball goes and are going to decide the quality of your serve, either if it's a slice, flat, or a kick serve. All right, thank you guys, and see you in the next video.